Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. You can connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as on my website and join the RV Living community at pippinings.com. So this is a part two of a two-part video series on how to build your own solar panels from scratch. And so be sure to check out the first video as well as there's an accompanying blog post that has a lot of information just for this project, like specifications, shopping list, details, and all sorts of stuff like that that can help you either replicate this project or help guide you to build your own project. So be sure to check that out. All right, well, let's get started on all of the wiring of the solar panel now that all the cells are soldered together. So the basics is, this is a terminal block. The negative is gonna to connect to the terminal block in the middle, and the positive is gonna to connect to the, term, the other side of the terminal block. And in the middle of this, you've got a diode, and that just makes sure current doesn't flow backward and you know short out any cells or wiring that you've got in the solar panel. So that's pretty much it. So we can start by, it's gonna be easier to get like the wires assembled with the feet on and, and soldered before we connect it to the terminal block. But we can start by connecting the terminal block to get that one done. And these are just holes that, that I drilled out when I was making the frame. And it was easy because the terminal block has these little screw holes. So I just stuck a Sharpie down in there and I could easily note where I had to drill out. So since I have a diode that's gonna go in the middle of the, the positive wire, I'm gonna have to cut it. I'm gonna cut it. and I'll need to strip away some of the insulation so that I can solder it to the, the diode's little legs. And then this side of the wire is gonna touch and be soldered to the other side of the diode as well as have one of these little feet clamp that can connect in there. So I can do the same thing for each of these. Now the diode, it's got like these uh, long legs that come out of it. And you have to be really careful that you don't break them off of the diode. So I'm actually gonna put like a little bit of a bend in them, kind of like uh, like one of those longhorn cow <laughs> antlers or whatever, uh, just to kind of, because it's gonna be, you know, worked in here and then moved around, I'd rather there be a bend to kind of reduce the stress. So I got my two wires ready and I got my diode ready. I'm pretty much just gonna solder it to make a shape like this. And I'm gonna start by getting flux on my wires and I'm also gonna get flux on this. And then I'm gonna try to get as much solder as I can on here and on here totally separate so that, you know, solder's flowing on each element separately. And then I'm gonna solder them together. Once you've got a definite solid secure connection from your diode to your positive wire then you can take some heat shrink and this will keep this from being exposed so after a little bit of discussion with my dad who's an electrical engineer he suggested that I put heat shrink around the diode as well. He said it's possible that wrapping it in the heat shrink could lose a few watts from the panel because it could get a little hot, but it would make it stronger and you know help protect it like in case something shorts it out or whatever. Next you can add a little foot onto the end of your wire, your positive wire that's gonna to connect to the terminal. And you know this side is because the gray on the diode is gonna point, point towards the terminal block. Crimp that down. And now it should be on there pretty well. So I ended up bending my little foot because of this 
uh, like bar here, I couldn't get um, the little circle part in, so I had to bend it. So I'm gonna have to get it in this way. So I've got my wire connected on this side. There's the diode. And now I just need to solder this piece to my, my ending positive side. Repeat the same process for the negative side minus the diode. Well, after getting uh, these uh, wires soldered in and you know putting in the, the bus wire, I've got fingerprints over here as well as some uh, flux splatter and just a ton of flux splatter over where I had to solder the wires to. So I got a little bit of cleanup before I move on to the next step. After that, I can put a long bead around all of the cells because when I pour my encapsulant I don't want the encapsulant to run to the edges because I've got holes and stuff and it would just waste a bunch of it. Righty row! Are you guys ready for the last step of this project? You're probably not as ready as I am. Uh, I'm so ready to do this. I can't wait and I've got my encapsulant here, my silicon encapsulant. Uh, this one is QSIL216. That's just like a weird chemical name. They have other chemical names like SILGARD184 and uh, I think there's even another one. But anyway, this is kind of the cheaper one. Um, probably because they're, the people selling it are just competing, not because it's better or worse. Anyway, it is a two-parter. It did not come with instructions, but luckily I've worked with, uh, you know, catalyst and things like this before. So I am going to do what I would suspect. I'm going to pour this big one in here, which is clean, and I have uh, a clean stir stick on this side at least. And uh, then I'll pour this in and mix it for probably like 10 minutes or something. And then I'm just gonna pour it on. It's possible that uh, that this is empty enough on top, yeah, to pour this in. However, I don't know how you would stir it, and I don't want to shake it because I don't want to get bubbles in it. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna pour it in here. So normally, or I mean normally, in the two times that I've used uh, stuff where you have like a two-parter the the second part is a catalyst or um, I'm not even sure what the scientific name would be called but it's kind of something that sets sets the epoxy or encapsulant or whatever you want to call it as well as kind of forces air bubbles out so that it's a it's a hundred percent seal um, so I'm guessing that's what this one does for this. Also, you might be wondering like, what is QSIL or what is silicon encapsulant? Well, you know, and why can't you use epoxy, right? Like, for example, I did my penny countertop and my broken CD tabletop in, in epoxy. Like, why can't you use that? Well, there's a couple reasons. One is, Epoxies will have a tendency to yellow in the sun and these are only going to be sitting in the sun so you don't want them to yellow because that will reduce uh, the amount of sunlight, photovoltaic stuff that uh, comes from the cells because it'll be uh, uh, slightly hindered by the color change, the darker color. And two, this stuff is This stuff is not uh, going to be 100% rigid when it is dry. And you want that. You want there to be some flex 
to allow when these cells, you know, heat up and uh, cool down and whatnot, they're going to change sizes, you know, I mean, probably micro sizes, but they're still going to be changing. And if it were in something like an epoxy or an, a glue, when those changed, if it was so rigid that they were environment that they were in, they would be cracking and breaking. And once you have a piece of the blue break off from the rest of the cell, the uh, energy that that, it'll still create energy, but it'll be separated from where the wire is, where the, you know, the main cell, and it will not, uh, it'll not give you any extra energy. So once the cells break, you're losing that much more uh, voltage and amperage that you can get from them. I did read online that this stuff will last for about four hours, so don't worry about, you know, over stirring. It's probably better to over stir than to under stir. I mean, you got four hours, it's not going to take four hours to pour, to stir and pour this in. So there's two differences I want to point out between making your own panels and buying them. One is the way that they're encased. Uh, on the purchase panels, almost always the cells are going to be laminated to the glass. I mean, they're like perfectly uh, without any oxygen or water in there. So it's possible that the cells will last longer. And when I mean longer, I mean like, you know, maybe 30 or 40 years versus 20 years or something like that. So uh, I don't know exactly, but uh, the bought ones are laminated. This one's encapsulated with the uh, silicon. And the other difference that I want to point out is the glass thickness. So in my, in my solar panel that I built, I used quarter inch tempered glass. And when you buy them, it's probably going to be an eighth of an inch or maybe even less. And I don't know if ones you purchase are tempered or not. I don't know. Uh, but mine, it can withstand up to like 100 mile an hour wind. And, uh, you know, if a baseball hits it or something like that. Whereas if it's not tempered, you know, you let's say in the middle of the day you spray it with water to cool them down because they're more efficient when they're cooler. You might break the glass, but on tempered glass, that's not going to be the case. So it's kind of a toss up, you know, uh, to have like, you know, better glass, thicker glass. Again, I don't know if most of them or all of them or what when you, that you buy are tempered or not, but uh, this way, you know, you're getting like a really sturdy glass that's totally going to stand up for, you know, 20, 30 years. All right. Well, was this project worth the cost and worth the time? Probably no. In fact, definitely no. So the specifications on this panel, the cells are, they rated at like 3.8, I think it was, and the voltage is uh, half volt. And so because I did 18, I put them in series, I, or sorry, I said I did 36, I put them in series, so I have about, I should have about 18 volts coming out. Uh, when I tested, I had a little bit less, but that was because it was upside down and, you know, shade was uh, on part of the cells, even though I was using a mirror to reflect the sunlight. Anyway, at the rated specification, which is, by the way, you're always going to see the rated specifications on purchased panels, and it doesn't mean you're going to get that. So on the rated specification for this panel, I should get 68 watts. And uh, so before I put these all together, I took four cells connected in series and I took them out and put them in the sunlight and I tried to read them and I wasn't getting 3.8 amps. I was getting like two point something. So let's be safe and say the minimum for this panel is going to be like 35, 40 watts. Maximum is going to be like 65 or something like that. 
So normally you want to spend no more than like a dollar per watt on a panel. Uh, this panel with all the materials, and mind you, I had to buy extra wire. You know, I had to buy like 25 feet of wire, red and white, and I only needed, you know, less than a foot. So, I mean, that was 16 bucks total there. Uh, so I don't know if you can account you know those extra 24 times two feet of wire into the cost uh, but but it was a cost because i had to buy it so let's say roughly the materials you know not including like buying 24 extra feet of wire um and i had the screws already uh it was rough it's a little bit over 100 bucks so uh you know not totally worthwhile and it was a lot of work <laughs> So uh, it's way easier and way cheaper to just buy them. But this is a fun and awesome project and I'm so happy I did it. I'm still gonna use this panel. I have a project in mind and you can stay tuned for that video. So um, anyway, you know, if you want to do this, remember that I've got an accompanying blog for this whole project, which has a ton of information, plus how you can, if you want to change the specifications or like, you know, do different shapes or dimensions and stuff like that. So that might be really handy for anybody. Uh, so be sure to reference that. Again, that's at my website at pippetings.com. And also the, the link is in the description of this video. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy trails and keep it simple.